The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant says they are slowly learning more about the damage at the number one reactor containment vessel. The destruction was caused by the 2011 accident. Engineers are investigating leaks in several places in the containment container that houses the reactor. They're injecting water to cool nuclear fuel. Because the circulation system was destroyed, the water is leaking and pooling around the site. In November, crews using a camera-equipped robot discovered two leaks in the lower part of the containment vessel. They examined the images and other data and estimate that more than one ton of water may be leaking from unknown holes or cracks. The engineers plan to use another robot to find other possible problems. They'll expand their search to include the suppression chamber linked to the containment vessel through a thick pipe. The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is discovering more damage at the reactor containment vessel. It says it is going to take steps to avoid further contamination in the area. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. Engineers are investigating leaks in several places in the container that holds nuclear fuel. The plant's water circulation system was destroyed in the aftermath of the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Workers have been injecting more than four tons of water an hour into the vessel to cool the nuclear fuel. In November, crews using a robot equipped with a camera discovered two leaks in the lower part of the containment vessel. They estimate that more than three tons of water may be leaking every hour. The engineers have also learned that more than one ton of water is leaking from elsewhere. They plan to send in the robot again to search for other possible problems. They say they'll expand their search to include the suppression chamber linked to the containment vessel. At the same time, workers are trying to contain leaked and leaking radioactive wastewater on the site. In February, they will test how much radioactive strontium, an absorbent material placed underground, can remove from leaked wastewater. Workers will dig a 20-meter deep hole near the leaking tank and bury the absorbent. The measure proved effective at the U.S. nuclear facility. However, some believe it won't be as successful with the salty water that has accumulated at the Fukushima plant. Tokyo Electric plans to assess the test results to decide by late February whether to fully introduce the absorber. Regulators have told Fukushima Daiichi's operators to reduce radiation at the plant's perimeter. They're concerned about reports of measurements eight times the limit. The regulators made their demand to representatives of Tokyo Electric Power Company. They said radiation in some parts of the plant's perimeter is 8 millisieverts a year. They told the firm to get it below the limit of 1 millisievert a year by March 2016. The regulators said cutting the radiation will reduce its impact on the environment outside and the doses received by plant workers. Company representatives say 90% of the radiation at the edge of the plant comes from tanks of contaminated water. They say they'll treat that water to get the radiation down. Some experts question whether the work will go to plan.
Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe says his government will replace its decades-old arms export ban with a new set of rules that allows weapons exports under controlled conditions. Abe was answering a question in the upper house on Thursday about the government's plan to revise the ban. He said that Japan will maintain the basic philosophy of a peaceful nation that observes the UN Charter when revising it. The new set of rules will clarify cases in which shipments should be banned. The government will devote rigorous study to defining which transfers should be allowed. Thorough screening and proper controls should ensure that such exports are not used for purposes other than those stipulated. Transshipments to third countries should also be properly controlled. Abe said that in formulating the new rules, the government will take into consideration the historical effects of Japan's export ban. Lawmakers of the junior coalition partner New Komeito have expressed concern about Abe's intention, saying it lacks sufficient mechanisms to control arms exports. Some survivors of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki will travel to Mexico to speak about their experiences after the attacks. They'll attend the second international conference in Nayarit on the humanitarian impact of nuclear weapons. The first meeting was held in Norway last March. The two-day meeting in February will focus on their use globally and how to ban them. The attendees will discuss the effects of a nuclear explosion as well as its influence on the climate and economy. Officials in Mexico requested people from Japan to participate in the meeting. They have been asked to share their stories and offer opinions on the abolition of nuclear weapons. The Japanese doctor will participate in the conference as a member of the country's delegation. Masao Tomonaga lived through the 1945 atomic bombing of Nagasaki and for decades has treated many of the survivors. NHK World's Chie Yamagishi has more. Tomonaga heads the Red Cross Hospital in Nagasaki. He says he's willing to tell people around the world about what has happened to the survivors since the atomic bombings. Many survivors are still suffering the after effects. The nuclear blasts not only killed many people immediately, but also caused tens of thousands of people to eventually fall ill and die. The atomic bombs dropped during wartime in Hiroshima and Nagasaki killed 210,000 people in that year alone. Tomonaga was nearly three kilometers from Grand Zero at the time of the Nagasaki bombing. He was exposed to radiation at the age of two. More than a decade after the bombings, he knew other survivors had developed leukemia one after another. This prompted him to become a doctor. He himself has not developed any diseases. But by giving treatments, he has witnessed the profound impact of radiation and how survivors have developed diseases such as cancer and leukemia over decades. Last year, Tomonaga attended the first Oslo conference. He spoke before representatives of about 130 countries. The atomic bomb are gene-targeting weapon, of which radiation immediately causes DNA damage. The fundamental nature of nuclear weapon is an anti-humanitarian weapon uh, from a medical point of view. The movement to recognize the catastrophic consequences of nuclear arms has spread to the United Nations. At the General Assembly last October, a record 125 countries, including Japan, signed a document. It says that for the sake of humanity's survival, nuclear weapons must never be used again under any circumstances. Tomonaga and other participants in the upcoming conference in Mexico have gathered to discuss their next moves. Several countries, including Norway and Switzerland, are aiming to create momentum for a treaty banning the weapons. But in reality, many nuclear states and those relying on their nuclear umbrellas are favoring a more cautious approach for disarmament. <laughs> Tomonaga is well aware of the severe realism of international politics. But even so, he says, 
is eager to educate the international community about the inhumane nature of nuclear weapons. Human beings have to stop keeping nuclear arms as a way to ensure their security. Now that the inhumane nature of such weapons has been clarified through discussion, we should move ahead and abolish them. Tomonaga wants his message to reach as many people as possible. If the people of the world change their minds, maybe their countries... Exodus has begun as Chinese holiday makers leave their country for overseas destinations. One of them is Tokyo, where retailers are hoping to cash in on the festive mood. Chinese visitors could be seen in Tokyo's electronics district Akihabara on the first day of the holidays on Friday. Among the most popular items being sold were rice cookers and cameras. I love clean air, good food and a beautiful environment. Store staff say they've increased their inventories as they expect more holiday shoppers this year. The number of Chinese visitors to Japan is rebounding after taking a plunge in late 2012 because of the two nations' difference over a group of islands in the East China Sea. Japanese tourism officials are taking steps to help visitors overcome one of their biggest obstacles, the language. They've drafted guidelines for translating street signs into English, NHK World's. Shunsuke Ide has the story. Tokyo's Roppongi Dori is popular at night and draws many foreign visitors. The signs are in Japanese and Romanized characters. I think it's difficult to understand. Maybe writing street or avenue would be better. The Japan Tourism Agency assembled a panel of experts to suggest ways to improve the signs. They called for more foreign languages, and they suggested standardizing the way Japanese terms are translated. Heiwa Odori is one of Hiroshima's main streets. It runs past the popular Peace Memorial Park. The current signs give only a Romanized version of the name. But officials plan to add the translated name, Peace Boulevard. The experts say some names should stay as they are. Kyoto's Kiyomizudera is one of Japan's most famous attractions, so they'll keep it as it is, but add the word temple in English. Japan's famous volcanic baths are called onsen, or hot springs, or even spas. The experts say they should be standardized as onsen, a word most visitors already know. Some local officials are already following the guidelines, but one member of the panel said he hopes they become the norm. The government has drafted these rules, but we need local governments and private enterprises to put the ideas into effect. Tourism officials are hoping that they can make life easier for the millions of people that visit each year. And they want to make the country more tourist-friendly in time for the 2020 Olympic Games.